I'm going to read to you from my book, Kitten Heels and Katmandu Adventures of a Female Vagabond. This is my second book, and it is on Amazon now. It's for Kindle reading, so it's downloadable. But I always download everything onto my iPhone, and you can also put it on your Mac, and you don't have to have a Kindle. So... This particular book is the only one that has pictures in the text. So these are pictures that I took all over the world. There's about a hundred pictures in here. So if you want to see India, Nepal, Italy, and I think Argentina is in there too. Anyway, there's several countries and Thailand, Lao. These are the ones that I can think of. Bali. So check it out. So I'm going to read to you the introduction, which starts the book out. This book is from really my starting maiden voyage of realizing I wanted to travel full time. I was sitting around one day and I noticed there was no one to make dinner for. My son was riding camels in Morocco and meeting holy men in caves on his own dime when suddenly light entered my brain. I need adventure in the unknown. If he can do it at age 17, I can sure as hell do it. It should be easier for me. I'm older than him. So I went on my first three-week vacation in 15 years to Italy and Spain. The Italians said I was plum loco for waiting so long. They checked my head for fever and suggested there may be cellular damage. But I had an epiphany in Florence, walking in the rain under an umbrella. I was ready to leap into life and not look back. I felt utterly at peace and so happy that I didn't want to leave, ever. I felt each hour in a blissful state of not knowing what would happen next. So I took my hands off the steering wheel and let the journey take me. I was happy being hit on by handsome men in Italy. Probably would have married one of them if I'd stayed another week. One man's dimples were divine. I swam in them with my eyes. That was just the beginning. My son then informed me that he was going to Asia for nine months. No problem, I said as I cried into my pillow. But I wiped away my tears and decided to take the world by storm and live a life I was excited about. I always wanted to be a vagabond but didn't know the details on how to do this. I raised my son to be adventurous and to express his heart's desires. To reach out to the world and love it. He flew over oceans, continents, and the Himalayas spreading his wings so wide it felt like an umbrella for me. And the wind caught me and I floated like Mary Poppins. It carried me to Nepal to teach photography to the staff of the Nepal Youth Foundation. Kathmandu felt like third rock from the sun. Everything was different. The light, food, faces, the language, the clothing. The way people worshiped God. It changed my life and made me see my purpose. I was off and running, drunk on my own freedom. I continued to take six to ten months solo trips every year, and after going around the world twice and teaching and traveling in 27 countries, I knew this was not just a trip. This was my life. So I sold all my furniture, my car, and even my red vintage motorcycle jacket. I gave the rest away. No more stress, insurance, car maintenance, or rat race. Poof, all gone. It was liberating. So now I'm a professional vagabond. I teach photography worldwide, shoot for businesses, nonprofits, and expats. I teach Kundalini yoga and meditation retreats, and I play with people and love elephants. My title I'm an artist and CEO of Fun. Projects find me. Travelers want to learn photography and yoga, and invitations arrive for me to volunteer my skills.
It's a big, wide world full of people who need help and inspiration. I used to spend over $500 a day on vacations. I drove a new car, bought cashmere and silk clothing, lived in a swank apartment, and regularly went out to eat and drink at posh places. I worked incessantly so I could afford this style of living. Now I spend $500 in a month and live a happier, richer, and simpler life. I don't even need a car or want one. Third world countries provide low-cost transportation for everyone. Yes, it can be colorful to sit next to a large box of baby chickens with a fresh-caught flounder at my feet in Ecuador while listening to salsa music blasting at 7 a.m. and watching Jesus paraphernalia swing from the ceiling. Sometimes I do travel in air-conditioned buses in Thailand where I live like a queen. Solo travel makes me stronger. It's a learning, eye-opening, incredible journey. I would never be growing like this if I stayed at home stuck in the safe and swank suburbs. I'm meeting dynamic people from all over the world and having my eyes pried open and wits sharpened. I've learned how to trust my gut with unflappable certainty. And now I can sleep on a plank with my camera as a pillow or under a table at the airport after a canceled flight with my backpack folded to my thigh and just to be certain a table leg as well. Squalling babies and rock hard mattresses don't annoy me. Air turbulence lulls me to dreamland. Traveling into the unknown has transformed me on a cellular and spiritual level. I no longer see life as black and white. There are a lot more gray areas, and I'm not just talking about my hair. I'm talking about being opened up and deeply changed by new people, foreign money, fresh ideas, and new spirits. I'm not in a rush anymore. Now I just wait. The answer will come. Oftentimes, I want to be alone with my own soul to see what's in there. I never know what I'll find, so I am just letting it be. Letting the world come to me as I quietly get on a plane and fly to a new country, then hit the ground running and travel overland to feel the energy of the place bubble up from the soles of my van sneakers into my heart and explode out the top of my head. How will I change from it? I never know. That's why I travel. Not just to take photographs and capture a place on film. It is to know myself through the eyes of a different world, the rarefied air of a new culture with new customs, new souls, and new faces. And food I can't identify, but it sure tastes good. The best places never seem to be in the guidebooks. They just pop up in a friendly face, an accidental discovery, or a change of plans. Nothing is set in granite. And that is also why I travel, to see that everything is impermanent. This could all be over in an instant. We could die suddenly, get sick, or be annihilated. If the world is going to hell in a handbasket, why not see it before the basket breaks? I live outside the USA to stop thinking about myself all the time. It's exhausting, and reaching a hand out to someone who needs it is fulfilling. There are worlds to discover in our own souls. I'm digging with a shovel to get to those new layers inside me, to change and to keep on changing. I'm rich with experience seeing how the world lives outside my former bubble of a life devoted to the almighty buck, cashmere and comfort. I've been stupid, smart, lucky, well off, broke, mocked and loved, and I've learned something from every damn second of it. I've had an astounding education in life being a professional photographer, a published author, a hitchhiking hippie, teaching Buddhist nuns kundalini yoga, leading programs at major corporations in the USA, photographing the Dalai Lama, riding elephants bareback in Nepal, learning how to surf, ride a motorcycle and scuba dive, living in a home for abandoned people in Argentina, and so on. I'm on an open-ended world adventure. I'm grateful for the blessings in every moment of the ride. I didn't set out to have a vagabond life. This life found me. But when it did, I was ready to take the leap. 
Kitten Heels in Kathmandu is not linear. You can pick it up anywhere and just read it, even in the bathtub. Enjoy the fun, frivolity, and at times daunting adventures of a female vagabond. And then it goes into the rest of the book, which I will not read the whole thing, but if you would like to find it, it's Kitten Heels in Kathmandu on Amazon, Adventures of a Female Vagabond. Enjoy, and comment below and let me know if you have any questions. The book link is below for Amazon.